everyone, it's Sue from Fiona's Fabrics in Woodbridge. Today I'm going to show you how to make this um, really easy little portable bin. It's got a pin cushion attached so you can hang it from the edge of a table um, and it hangs down. It's a little thread catcher so nothing too weighty in there but great for if you're going on a workshop and they don't have enough bins you've got your own little bin that you can anchor on the table next to you. Um, I'll just go through what you need to make it. I use um, ground up walnut shells uh, and the ones I've been using at the moment are lavender scented which are really nice and you can source them online. Uh, we will be putting kits together for this in the shop um, and we will put the ground walnut shells in with the kits. You're going to need a piece of boning for the top of your bag and I, about a 20 inch piece for this size so it's got a bit of an overlap. Um, you can also use, if you can't get hold of boning, you can use the um, nylon strapping that parcels come wrapped in, um, you know the stiff stuff that goes around parcels, it's really tough. You can cut a piece of that up and use that. You're going to need two pieces of fabric for your little bin. You want an outer piece and a lining and these both need to be the same measurement, they need to be 16 inches across and 9 inches down. You need a piece of fabric for your pin cushion, that needs to be 7 inches across and 8 inches and then this is for the hinge, and the hinge piece is eight inches by four inches. Just be aware when you're cutting out, if you've got a directional print as this is, which way your print's going. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get going. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to get your hinge piece. So we're gonna stitch that first. So take the hinge piece, and we've got, as I said, we've got eight inches across and we've got four inches, and we're gonna stitch just down, take the two short ends together, if you need to pin it, pin it. Hold those two ends together and then take it to the machine and we're going to stitch down that edge, just that edge. Now I've got an average stitch length, I've got a cream thread, so match your threads to what you're stitching. Um, I'm using the edge of my presser foot as the edge mark on the fabric. Remember to back tap, we don't want this coming undone. And stitch all the way across, back tapping at the far end. snip your threads before you turn. Okay, then we're just gonna pop it through. And with ever, as I don't know if you've followed me before, if you're gonna put, turn this through, where the stitch line is here, there's gonna be a little bit of a gully, so just put your fingers in and thumbs in there and press that open. We want that to stitch, stitch, sit along the very edge of the fabric. I'm just gonna finger press this, ideally go to an ironing board and press it. So I've got my little hinge piece now, and that just connects the bag to the pin cushion. So the next thing we're going to work on is our pin cushion. So this is the piece that's seven inches high by eight inches, sorry, seven inches across by eight inches high. Okay, um, we're gonna fold that along halfway, so now we've got it seven inches by four inches. And what I want you to do with this, I want you to fold it in half, so you're making a little square. Just to put a crease line down the middle here, I'm gonna pop a pin in so you can see it. So I'm just marking the very center, and we're gonna do the same with our hinge piece. Now, when this is turned through, it's going to sit like this. So I want my hinge pin, it will come from here, but I want it to sit correctly. So to do that, I need to line up which way and flip it in. So again, center it, so fold it in half, crease to mark the centre and line that up with your pin, okay? Before you close it off and stitch it, just pin it in place and just check that when it's all turned through, your pattern will be the correct way, okay? So what I'm going to do with that, I'm doing those pins, I'm going to flip that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich that in between the pin cushion, so I hope you can see that. So. I've got eight inches this way and seven inches this way. This is my hinge piece and I've got my seam where I turned it on the side here and it's sandwiched between the two and I'm folding that over. I've got my crease there so I'm lining that crease up to the pin and then I'm going to pin across this top edge. So turn it so your pins are going to be the right way when you're at the sewing machine. And what we're going to do now, we're going to stitch around two sides. So one short side and one long side. Again, average stitch length and use the edge of your presser foot as the guide for your seam allowance. Remember to lock it off when you start.
pivot that point at the corner. Take the pins out as you go. So we're just doing two sides on this. So lock it off when you get to the end. I'll take it off the machine. And remember to keep these threads nice and neat. Otherwise your work will be scruffy and then you'll have to go back and just tidy it up later. Now we're going to turn this through, so I'm just going to snip my corner off to reduce the bulk in the corners. And I'm only doing it to those two corners. And then you can see we go in and when we pull this through, we have our hinge attached. So get your scissors or your turning tool, whatever, in and poke these corners out now. Remembering not to poke through the end, otherwise you have to turn it back and go and do it again. One makes all the difference getting these corners poked out nicely. Um, it does make such a difference to the end product. So you can see here, on this piece, my hinge is the pattern is going the correct way, but on the pin cushion it's not. So I know that this side is the correct side, so my pin cushion is the correct way, and also the, the pattern on my fabric is the correct way. So this is the way the front of the pin cushion will be. So the next thing I want you to do, I'm just going to tidy these raggy ends up. We're going to turn this top edge in. Now I like to just hold you in place with a little bit of um, stick glue. So not much, just a tiny dab along the top edge on the inside of the fabric. And it'll just hold it all neat as we're going to turn. And what I want you to do, I want you to take like a quarter of an inch seam on this top edge and turn it in. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So all the way around, and when you get this edge on, because you put a bit of glue in, it'll just help hold it all secure for you. So all the way around. Bit of a fiddle, but pair with it. And you can see what happens. You've got a nice, neat edge on it now. Now make sure it's sitting all nice and flat. I'm going to pop a pin in here because I don't want this moving. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stitch, top stitch all the way around, but I'm going to leave a little gap here because this is the pin cushion and I need to fill it. So leave an inch, and if you can see, let me pop my scissors in so you can see it. I'm going to leave an inch at this end so I can pop a funnel in there when I want to and then finish um, it off later with filling it with all the um, ground walnut shells. So mark your inch point. I can see where the inch is because there's a mark on the fabric. And then we're going to back tack this off. And we'll close the little gap up where we're going to put the walnut shells in later. So again, just all the way around. It'll give a nice neat edge to your pin cushion. So get your eye into the machine. Follow that mark that you've got. And just literally about an eighth of an inch from the edge. You're not too far in. Make sure that the hinge is all sitting nice and flat and come all the way across that piece as well. Okay. So what we've got now, we've got our pin cushion, which just needs filling. And I've still got my little gap here, which I'm going to put my funnel in later and fill it. Um, and we've got the hinge attached ready to go onto our bag. So that can be set aside for the time being. And we're now going to work on our outside fabric for our bin. So we're going to take the piece, we've got the 16 inches by 9 inches, and we're going to take the two short ends together. Now again, if you want to pin this, is it's fine. Um, it's always better if you're not comfortable to pin, but as you get more experience with the sewing and be able to stitch around and what you're going to do is you're going to stitch two sides of this and we're going to do exactly the same on the lining so make sure these edges are lined up now it's important on this piece 
to make sure you use exactly the same seam allowance because they've got to fit one inside the other when we put the bin together. So make sure to back tack when you start and make sure your fabric, if it's directional, is sitting the correct way. Lining now, and again line up these edges, and exactly the same as the outside fabric. Remember to back tack at the beginning and end. Okay. So what we've effectively done, we've made two little bags. So the next stage is what I want you to do, where we've got our stitch line here, come across to this edge on the fold and just take the tiniest nick out so you can see where the centre piece is. And then sit the bag down, put your hand inside and centre this seam. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and open that seam and just finger press it. And it's all to do with spreading the bulk of the fabric. So just press that open. You won't be able to go right down to the bottom but don't worry about that. Then take the seam and line the seam up with the little notch that you made. Okay. That means that that seam is now dead centre. And if you get hold of it, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. By doing, putting your hand in and making this top piece flat where we've lined up the centre seam, you effectively make two triangular ears almost. So make sure they're all sitting nice and uniform. Turn it over and spend a little bit of time with this to make sure it's sitting right. And you can see you've got like a little house piece. Okay, I'm just gonna check this side sitting up to where I want it. And we're going to use this to make our corner, um, our, the base of our bag. Now, what I like to do, I like to come up two inches. Now, this is a two and a half inch ruler. So from the point here, I'm going to measure two inches down. So I'm going to put my half inch mark there because I say this is a two and a half. If I get it lined up on the mat, I know I've got it straight. And again, take your time because sometimes with these things, you know, you can they make them sit, the more effort you put into being neat with it, the better the results will be. And then take an erasable pen, I've got a two inch mark and I'm going to draw a line across and the same on the back piece. And again what we do on this piece, we're going to do on the outside fabric. So we're going to use that and we're going to stitch across. So separate the ears because we're going to do one at a time. And again, if you want to pin this, that's fine. Back tack to start. And stitch all the way across and then back tack to finish. And again, we're doing these. I'm going to cut this one off just to show you. Trim those down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance just to take the bulk away. So I've done one and I'm going to go back and do the second one. As I say, this is forming the base of our little bin. Okay. So you can see what happens. By doing these, we've made ourselves a little base which is rectangular in shape, and it will now sit as a bin. So exactly the same on the second piece. The top, 
do the little nick so you know where the middle is. You can pop a pin in there, but just doing that little nick just makes it a lot simpler and easier. So spread that seam open. Line up the seam with your nick and then make sure these all sit. You'll be able to see how they go. They'll all sit so you've got these two sort of ears and make your little house shape. Okay, check the opposite side is sitting. I've got a bit of a crease in there, so manipulate it so it's sitting nicely. I think that's okay. And again, we're gonna mark our two inch line down from the point. So I'm gonna, that's just given us a stitch guide. And again, on both sides, I'll make sure my seam's sitting open. And then back to the machine and stitch those two. Again, we're stitching these independent of each other, so two on each piece of fabric. You could just pin this, but by putting that line, you have a stitch guide, and it's always easier to follow a line that's marked than a line of pins. As you get a little bit more practiced, you'll be able to be able to make sure you can follow the pins. But as a beginner, why make it more difficult for yourself? Right, so just trim that excess down. Opposite side. Trim away the excess. So if we turn this one through, poke the corners out. You can see this one will sit quite nicely and the seam will be down the center back. So remember that that's the center back of your bag. Now the lining one now will sit inside. So don't turn the lining one through because we want the wrong sides of the fabrics together. So you can see why it's important to get the seam allowances the same because these need to be exactly the same across the top because we need to turn the top down. Now again you can either do this with your glue stick if you want to help yourself along. So tuck down the lining to start and just run a little bead of glue and we're looking at turning down a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Um, you know it's not, it hasn't got to be exact. But what you do on one, you need to make sure you do on the opposite one, on the lining. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it over. And this is turning to be probably slightly more than a quarter of an inch. And go along all the way around. The glue just holds it and tacks it in place. Okay. I'm going to hold it and just give it a nip make sure I've got it level how I want it so that's fine and you can see that the actual outer one is now neatened so we need to do the same on the lining so run a little bead on your lining as well and then take the same measurement in again and you need to do that all the way around sitting quite nicely now okay now we've got to position one inside the other so find the back seam and start there line that back seam up and get a pin pop a pin in to anchor it together and then follow these edges around and you can see here I'm lining this top edges of the two pieces lining them up together and I'm popping a pin through all the way around and again it helps to if you pull and hold a bit of tension on that it'll help line everything up more easily nice 
little bit. So our bin's made, all nice and neat inside, all nice and neat on the outside. And we know that this is the center back because we've lined those seams up. So the only thing we need to do now is to attach the hinge. Now, when you attach the hinge, what you need to do is make sure you sit it in and it's straight. You don't want it so it's pivoting and wonky. So again, use a ruler and mark down. Now this is two and a half or three inches. You've got three and a half inches there on that to play with and depends on how far you want it hanging off the table, what this measurement will be. Um, I think it's quite nice to do three and a half. So I'm gonna measure up three and a half, uh, three inches rather, sorry, three inches. And I've got my three inch line measured on my seam line here. I don't know if you can see it. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to mark a line across my hinge. So what I've done, I've marked from this corner to there is three inches and that's three inches. So when I now put it to my bag, I know that I'll get it at the right level. So go back to your bin, take the back pin out, and what you need to do is you need to lay the lining, the hinge, just going to trim off all these rough edges because it's going to be scruffy. We need to, again, we need to centre it, so we need to find that centre and just put a little crease down because we're going to come down by half an inch or so. I'm going to line that crease in the centre with my seam line here and I'm going to put the line I marked on the edge of my bag. Take another pin out. I'm going to pin it this side because I want my pins on the opposite side. I just need to hold it all together. Okay, so our hinge is now attached, and our measurements are three inches there, and we've got three inches on that measurement from the bag to the pin cushion. What we're going to do now, we're going to stitch all the way around the top, but because we want to insert the boning, we need to leave a little gap for popping that in. So the reason I put the pins on the outside is I'm going to employ my free arm on my machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the bag, I'm going to slot the bag onto the free arm. Now I'm going to start about three quarters of an inch into my hinge. It doesn't really matter, but leave the gap around the hinge because that's where, be at the back of the bag and then it's where you're going to insert the boning. So, and what you're going to do, you're in a loop around and we're gonna stitch this top edge off. So, back tack to start. And you're gonna stitch all the way around through all the thicknesses. And what we're doing now is we're attaching the lining of the bag. Check everything's lined up as you go. And try and keep that measurement that you're down from the top, uniform. Adjust it as you go, because things will move. getting back to the start I'm making sure my lining isn't showing and I'm going to stop about three quarters of an inch away from where I started I'll often show you I'll just trim some of these threads a few raw bits of fabric fraying If I show you on the lining, um, I've stitched all the way around the top, but I've got a little bit of a gap here, and this is where I'm going to thread the boning through. Now, if I just thread the boning through there, 
it's just going to flop to the bottom of the bag. So the next thing we need to do is we need to mark down and we're going to stitch another line of stitching across all the way around the bag so it holds the boning at the top edge. And again, you know, you can guess this or why make it difficult, mark it. So again, I'm using my, air, my iron away pen. I'm going to mark a line and I'm coming down three quarters of an inch, but do check what width you are using. If you're using that binding stuff, just check the width of that and make sure you'll get it in the casing. So again, three quarters of an inch using your ruler. All the way around. And then back to the machine and you're gonna stitch all the way around again. So again, get onto your free arm. And when you start this, start towards the back of the bag because that's not going to show up as much. If you start at the front of the bag, everything's going to be in your face. I'm not back tacking when I start because I'm going to come back round in a loop. So I'll back tack everything off at the end. And I'm following my line that I've marked. All the way around. And this will just iron away later. This is why it's important to have those seam allowances the same because all these need to sit nicely without having any puckers or gathers. So back tack it off at the end. And snip away. Let's take it off. Okay. So what we've got now, we've got our pin cushion, which we need to fill. We've got our hinge and we've got our bag. And it's looking pretty good. The only thing we have to do now is to put our boning in. Now you can get us a branded boning called Rigeline. This, is this isn't Rigeline, this is a plastic one that we happen to have in the shop. But what it does, it makes sure that that front, the top of the bag sits open. It's really malleable. So you can pull it about and twist it and bend it. It's not gonna break. And that's why it's used in corsets, so it moves with you. I've cut, for this one, I think it's about 15 inches around the top. So I've cut about a 20 inch, so about a half a metre length of boning, because I want it to overlap. Whoops. I want it to overlap so that it'll hold itself nice and fast. So you can see the curve of it. So common sense dictates that you will go with the curve. Don't try and go against the curve. So find where you've left your little gap. Poke the boning in and start feeding it through. And it feeds really simply because it's a, a stiff product. It'll bunch up, but keep feeding that end around and then keep going back past where you went in. Just continually feed around and it will gradually take in the second tail. You can see it's disappearing in now, it's getting smaller. And if you don't, you know, you don't have to have such a big overlap. I just, it's just easy for me when I'm making kits to actually put in half a metre or something. Okay, so I'm going to make sure it's all sitting there. And you can see now how rigid that top is. But we've still got this little tiny bit where, our, our, we, where we threaded it in. So we need to go back and we need to make sure that is all secure. So make sure it's sitting down in the right place. I'm actually going to pop a pin in there because I've not got as much movement in there because of the rigeline that's in. I'm going to take it back to the machine and I'm going to join up where I'm stitching around the top. I'm going to close that piece off. So back tuck again, just close that little three quarters to an inch that you left open for threading. Stitch that off. Now everything's nice and secure inside. So we're pretty much there. So everything's sitting nicely. We've just got our pin cushion to fill. Now, when you do that, I've got, obviously you need the mug. Um, a mug full is about right for this pin cushion. So obviously if you, if you make it bigger, then just adjust your quantity. This is 200 grams. Um, I just had to play around and measure it. And I've got my little piece here. Now, if you haven't got a funnel, I've got a jam making funnel. Find your little hole and pop it in. You can put a piece of paper or light card and make your own funnel. Don't pour too many at once because it'll, it'll block it. 
So make sure you take your time to get these in because they will go in, but they'll take a little bit of time. So let them just work their way down. They smell beautiful. And the shells are supposed to keep your pins sharp, whereas if you filled it with sand, it won't or rice. Um, don't know if that works or not, but we will see. But it just gives that little bit of weight. And actually, the, the lavender in it is gorgeous because my whole kitchen smells of lavender at the moment. It's a bit like watching paint dry. I'm sorry about that, but I need to show you how to close this up. Don't scrimp on this. There's nothing worse than a sad looking pin cushion. Okay, they're all in. So we just need to close this up. I've got an inch, so I'm going to put a pin in because I don't want this spilling all over the machine. Now, depending on your machine and how full you've got your pin cushion, you may need to, um, on this piece, you may need to put your zipper foot on. I'm just swapping my pin around because when you stitch, if you've not got much under the back of the presser foot, the machine will struggle to come forwards. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I've got the bulk of the fabric to the back and I'm going to finish at the edge of the fabric. So I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. And I'm just closing up that gap and it's just finishing off that line of the top stitching that we did. So all the way to the very end and back tack at the end. And this is important, you don't want it coming undone. So as ever, get those nice and neat. And there you go. So we've done this little bit of top stitching all the way round, which then makes it nice when you finish off at the end, it means that actually nothing shows up differently. So you've got the nice weight of the pin cushion and just hold in the bag. Um, they're great little makes, um, especially useful if you go to workshops or little classes, not that we're allowed to at the moment, but hopefully we'll get going back to that. Um, what I like about the, these particular sizes, you can pop your pin cushion in and it'll all fold up and just sit in the top of your sewing bag or your sewing machine bag. Um, fabulous little things. Um, I think you'll enjoy making them. Again, good for little um, swapses with your sewing friends or for any little sales that you might be doing. Hope you enjoy making them and we will have kits available in the shop and they will be on um, our Facebook shop. So if you are interested, then email us info at fionasfabrics.co.uk and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.